the only constant is change, period. I think we learn this more and more as we get older because you see someone in one way, you see yourself in one way, however things change. Cynthia, she's in the building. Welcome. How are you? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. And I'm super pumped to speak with y'all. And this is the first in-person podcast at the new studio, Miami, what Florida. What an honor. This is awesome. Yeah, thank you. And we're here and I'm so grateful to have you on the show. I know when we first start these, you guys probably already heard so much about Cynthia because, you know, that's what I do. I brag about the people on the show and the introductions, but I have never spoken to somebody that thinks the way you think when it comes to asking the continuous questions, why? Why is that? Why are you doing that? You are so good at making people just peel the onion back in terms of the layers of how they think about their career in life. You use the word career, And you actually asked me this earlier, but I'm going to ask it back at you. Mm -hmm. When you think of a career, what does that actually mean to you? First off, uh, definitely was not ready for that. Thank you, because, wow, those are some really big words. So thank you. I do appreciate it. And ditto. But what a career is to me, how I would define it, and of course, anyone can define it the way that they would like, but a career is more than just a job. A career is really a series of different offers and opportunities that are either simultaneous or one after the other. And it's just a matter of deciding what offers you want to accept and putting them in line until the day you retire. So feel free to ask further if that didn't make sense. Got but it. to so me, a, that's what it's So a career is, is directly related to employment. Right. Because, I mean, in life, right, um, we all have to do something to make a living, right? Um, I guess you could live on the beach and have that be your career, right? That is a career. However, most of us have certain different levels and goals that we have in mind for our life. And um, that is how I would define it, is what can you do for a living? What is your choice of path, your unique path? Um And how is it going to create that life for you? It's interesting to think about when you take a step back and you ask yourself like, oh, okay, you know, for me, I'm 28 years old. I'm living in Miami. I don't have a cat or a dog yet, but both of those things I want to do one day. And you ask yourself like, am I doing what I love? Am I doing the things that when I'm 65, 70 or whatever, hopefully I get there, I can look back and say, damn. I did what I love. And one thing I've learned and seen a lot, and I ask myself this question all the time. I don't exactly know if I'm 100% there. I'm definitely not 100, but like I strive to be like 60 to 70% truly aiming at like what I want to do with my life because things change so much, which is interesting because when we're in our early 20s, things change so much. This is a random thing, but because of the podcast, I have a lot of people from like my high school that reach out to me people that I never spoke to, right? Mm -hmm. I might have judged them. They might have judged me in the past. And they're completely different people. And I've realized that anyone who you were before the age of like 18, before you even went to college, you weren't even a person at that time. You haven't thought things out. You haven't even become that person. And that's interesting to me because time changes people. People grow. People change. That's the way the world works. And it's very awesome to know that there are so many great people out there and you haven't even met them yet the only constant is change period so i think we learn this more and more as we get older um because you see someone in one way you see yourself in one way however things change and that has always been constant. So yeah, that's totally not surprising to me. And you should see that in yourself too, that they're probably seeing the same thing in you, right? Um, So I think that is one thing that when it comes to careers, people in general seem to get really 
kind of flustered and trust me, I can relate on what is my path? What is my purpose? What am I going to do with my life? Right. And I think we're all kind of thinking that at the back of our heads. But what I've learned is at the end of the day, you create your unique path because the only constant is change. And there is no right answer. There is no welcome to the real world. Here is your career, right? Um, follow accordingly. Here's the manual, right? Every career is unique and no two sound the same. And that's literally why, you know, I'm so passionate about hearing people's stories. And of course that's on the podcast because I could listen to literally everybody's career story. I'm so fascinated by it myself um, because you all have different unique paths and none of them sound the same. There's always a story hidden behind every resume, yet we're all thinking we're supposed to have it perfectly lined up. And I think that is the thing that if you realize that and take control of it, then you're ready to go full time and to seeing what opportunities are out there. What is my potential and where can I go from here? There are no wrong answers. It's totally up to you to decide. I love your fascination about people and their stories <laughs> and, and yeah, for sure. career fluence. Can you take us a step back and give us the journey of where it came from, where this brand came from? Because I, I see you and I see a lot of people just throughout the people I met and you're so always so happy. You're so on point with what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you're you. So, I think the word is dialed in. So can you just walk us through that story? Yeah. So Honestly, I would say career influencer in this whole fascination with careers started back in my own journey. Um, when I entered the real world, I did all the things, right? I had the perfect resume and, you know, all yada, yada. Yet after applying to hundreds of jobs um, for several months after graduation, I didn't land my first offer um, until seeing a Facebook page post by a friend. <laughs> like none of those applications turned out. And long story short, it was quite a wake up call kind of moment because I was like, what, when something's not going according to plan, that's when our kind of red flags pop up in our head. Like, what am I doing wrong? You know, what's, what did I miss? Because everybody else that I looked around at seemed to have it all figured out. And yet I felt <laughs> just as clueless as when we're like a kid and they ask us like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I was thinking, when did we decide all this? Also, how come I can't seem to figure out how to land a job in the first place? I can't even build my career, yeah, let alone start it. I mean, yeah. So to me, that's really when it was the biggest blessing in disguise because I never looked at my career the same and, you know, began my career in digital marketing and skyrocketed from there. And what separates the people that did get those jobs early on and, and versus the people that didn't? You know, I don't think I can even answer, answer that in like one little thing. Um, yeah. Are that's there what common I'll say. themes that you've seen in the people that you've spoken to that did seem to just constantly have these wins after wins after wins? Well, to me, and that's why I work with young professionals and actually all levels um, with their own career development is basically a lot of the things that we grow up learning and what we're taught um, and the way we expect careers to go, you know, processes to go is completely different from the real world. Because a lot of people, you know, when they go to college, for example, you learn how to do the job. It's one thing to know how to do the job and have the skills to be qualified for the work once you're hired. And a total other thing to know how to land an offer. And that skill set, which I literally think is a skill set, being able to land offers, um, that will completely change the trajectory of your career. Because think about it, if you knew that you could land any offer, right, it was only a matter of doing this, this and this, or if you wanted to be here, and it's just, you know, figuring out how to get those steps, then that is that freedom that everyone's looking for. And yet I felt like it was not taught. And that's why in my own situation, whenever I was trying everything, okay, that I could get my hands on listening to all the podcasts, you know, Googling my little heart out and getting so frustrated, I really, it opened my eyes up to see 
whoa, you know, all these different things in the hiring space. And then later on when I became, you know, the hiring leader and ultimately transforming the talent development and recruitment strategies for the corporation, you know, I really learned what it was like on both sides of the table. And that is what drives me on a daily basis, because I know there are so many people out there who have so much untapped potential and I want to help, you know, be the light. Well, you see people when they're very vulnerable, I bet. Like when you're in there with them, because when you do HR, it's you and one person and you're asking a lot of these questions that you don't typically talk about. Your 401k, your health insurance, you know their family and you know how many children they have. And you know that if they were to get fired or lose their job, how much it would influence them. But you see people's raw emotions. Does that impact? It's just like your journey, like seeing so many people go through the process themselves. I think the whole, the fact that, you know, anyone would even think that is vulnerable in the first place, that speaking about careers and career topics like that is, you know, kind of a not <laughs> normal thing that we talk about is the it's deal problem, in the yeah. first place. Not even a problem, but why is that? We, our careers take up more than, you know, 70% or more of our waking hours being alive. Why is that something that <laughs> we don't feel comfortable talking with or, you know, don't have that same amount of clarity as we do with our fantasy football leagues? You know, like these are the sort of things that, yes, I totally just started having eye opening moments. And what I've learned is that once you get that familiarity and you have those resources and you seek you seek for the answers you're asking yourself, then you will find them. Yeah. That's really powerful. And to take that experience to go through and being an HR coordinator and, and being able to onboard people, walk through that process. You're right. It's not talked about a lot. And it's honestly very vulnerable to ask for help. And I think that it's very difficult to go on, say, Facebook and ask like questions like, hey, who's hiring? Hey, I'm looking it's for an opportunity. It's not the hot topic that we just post about, you know, yeah. online. Like, hey, uh, <laughs> listen, bro. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I'm going to lose my house in like 20 days. Anyone got any suggestions? Right, <laughs> yeah. Or if we're struggling in our career or if we're, you know, we only see the success stories yeah. of the wins. And that's what we feel that pressure to do. And I want people to feel that comfortable, you know, comfortable, like, I guess, influence um, on themselves. And also not even ever feeling tied to anywhere, honestly, like talking about working with an HR person, at the end of the day, if you take control of your own career, it doesn't matter where you are, literally, physically at a company or at a location, there are more opportunities popping up right now more than ever. I think the pandemic really only opened up people's eyes even more to that, that this shift in the way we work and the future of work is now it's happening. And to me, it's the inevitable. I don't think it's something that we should be afraid of. However, it's a matter of, are you going to use this as an opportunity to take control of your own career or stay in the past? Right. And that's the question I think people should ask themselves and are asking themselves. Yeah, that's powerful insight. And it, it made me think about the idea that some people right now might not be in a career they love. Right. Or they just might be in a situation that they're just not super enthusiastic about life. I think a lot of times you asked me this even before, like, well, what do you want to do? What's your 20 year plan? Where do you want to be? Are you on that mission? I think a lot of times people don't ask themselves, what are they learning today that they can apply towards tomorrow? And it, by doing that, it forces you to realize, hey, your job isn't as bad as you just made it out to be. This is a stepping stone. If you look at that 20 year path to where you really want to be, ask yourself, does today get you where you need to be? Do the skills you learn are going to get you that offer to be able to get accepted? And that's a whole nother topic you mentioned with the offer, because it's so true. Interviewing is a skill, right? I'm in sales. I'm a sales guy. I love sales, right? But I do best when I don't care that much about whether I win or lose. That's when I do the best. Mm -hmm. When you have, if, when you're put too much into something, you open yourself up for complete devastation. Mm -hmm. I think that people need to learn more to just remove themselves from the outcome and be okay with whatever happens. That's going to help them, number one, not look desperate. And number two, going to make them feel more comfortable going through a process because interviewing is weird. Going to a new company is weird. You are basically put in a group with like 50 strangers 
when you're like, hey, my name's Ian, how are you? You know, I, I recently had to do it with my new career at SafeGraph, amazing company, amazing team, brilliant humans. But it's interesting, it's, it's you, you all of a sudden are working with people that you didn't have a choice, like they work there, you had a choice to apply, right? But now you have to work together with a bunch of strangers. And sometimes it works out really well. In my case, it did. But sometimes it doesn't work out well. But at the end of the day, you can completely be okay in so many different environments. You don't have to put so much pressure on yourself. Do you feel me? Right. I feel like, I mean, from my experience, when I first, you know, started my career, I clearly had no success, <laughs> you know, in what I was doing. My tactics weren't working. I was putting in so much effort and trying all the things, taking as much action as I possibly could, yet there was something missing and that something missing is hard to figure out. You can't just point it out for every single person. And what I've learned is you have to discover it for yourself, kind of like the fact that we aren't athletes, we are, you know, professionals to some degree or whatever path you're in you're in the business, you are in the game of your brain, literally. And I think that's what people, we don't know, nobody really <laughs> realizes, you know, the fact that what's going on in your head, what you're saying to yourself, um, the preparation, literally as if you were an athlete who needs both the inner and the muscles, um, you need double that in your brain. And yet that's one thing that I just totally didn't see until I was where I was. And it's been, you know, a total process of my own career, years and years and years, right, of figuring this out and being able to start teaching it to others, you know, over and over. That's the only reason why I've been able to get to where I am now. And it's so amazing where you are <laughs> at now and, and the, the business you've built and the online world you've built and the people you've connected with. Thank you. Ditto. Thank well, you. When we first connected, I reached out to you on Instagram and yes. it was funny because we had this initial conversation and, and typically when I just meet someone, it's just like, Hey, what's up? Hey, great. Like, you know, like it's, it's more so actually that's not even true. I tend to do go off on a standard, <laughs> but particularly with you, we just yeah. instantly connected because you started asking these really good questions that you just don't ask people. You don't ask those people. Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of an exercise of why, why are you doing that? And then you, you answer it and then you're like, well, why are you doing that? And you answer that and say, like, well, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Before you know it, you have to get deep down with yourself. What are you doing things for? What are the principles you're doing things for? Mm -hmm. I think that's what leads to like midlife crises and things of, of people that they don't really foresee where they're at. And next thing you know, they, they make an impulsive decision. Long way of saying this. I'm curious, what gets you so giddy? Because you're such a happy, kind soul. I mean, you just came in, you're, you're a bright light, you're... you're just a type of person that people should be around. I'm grateful that I'm around you just because Thank of you. like the momentum you give to other people in their lives. What gets that for you? You said learning other people's stories, but can you tell me more about that? To me, it's all a matter of being on your own journey. There's no one quick answer. And even things like, you know, midlife crises or quarter life crisis or making mistakes, it's all part of the journey. And that's the thing that I just really embraced is that we're all learning. You, you know how you have growth spurts when you're growing up, right? You can feel your muscles. We still grow in the real world afterwards. However, it's in your brain. And it's a matter of putting yourself out there, trying things and failing and taking initiative and persistence. Okay, so... At the end of the day, I would say like in terms of influence, in terms of taking that kind of internal drive to the next level, for me, it was a matter of am I going to let outside influence be in charge of my career decisions or myself? And that is the whole kind of growth journey of your career that I would say I've seen over and over and over is that there comes a point in your career where you have everything that looks perfect on the outside looking in, yet that one person might not be satisfied, right? Um, and it's confusing. And I went through this myself because I had my dream job, literally. Um, I created it. You know, it didn't even exist at the company. Yet here I was. I was the youngest supervisor out of like 4,000 leaders at the company, you know, people and leaders at the company. And 
I couldn't even believe it myself. Like, how did I get here? Yet something still felt missing. And then I realized that I saw something bigger. I didn't even know how or what or what it would turn into. Literally no answers at all. But that's the turning point decision that I feel like people really get tough on themselves about when they don't need to be. It's natural. And yet the fact that we don't talk about it only amplifies it more, that we have this one thing all in common. And by bringing on people who are, you know, extraordinary leaders in their own fields, experts in what they do. That's my whole goal with Careerfluencer, right? Is showing this space where you can come and where it's normal to be going through that growth. It's part of your journey and um, no two paths sound the same. I love it because in today's day and age, you can create a career and create a life doing anything you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You can start the YouTube channel, you can start monetizing it, you can start building a following just based on what you just mentioned, how did you create a career helping people create their career? Like, how Um, did you monetize this opportunity? You know, honestly, at the beginning, I only knew that I saw this vision in my head, really. And it sounds kind of loopy, you know, when I talk about it. But to me, that's how I knew I was on track, Um, like trusting my own influence even though it was stuck inside my head, because you got to remember that everything that exists in the world was once just an idea in someone's head. And it was only a matter of taking action on it, whether or not other people could see it. And to me, when I think about that and really kind of soak it in, I've got billions of ideas. I mean, I'm sure everybody does, right? However, are you actually going forward on it? Are, are you willing to try? And that was one thing that I could say to myself was I believed it was possible. I didn't even know what it would look like, but I was willing to try and figure it out. And to me, you know, I've, in terms of making money and all of that, that was always inevitable. It was just a matter of deciding what I wanted to say yes to or not. Um, because when you reach a point where you have done so many different things, you have potential, you've kind of figured it out in terms of, I know how to do a job well, which I feel like most people, even though they have so much potential, they might not see that because they feel like they're not qualified. If you feel like you're qualified for whatever you're ready to learn and are interested in, if you decide that for yourself, I think the options are endless in terms of what type of career you're in. To me, being an entrepreneur has so many similarities to building a career, yet at the same time, it is very, very different. And I know that one day I'm going to be sitting in this exact same seat, literally, you know, teaching that part too, in terms of here's how to build massive success and make millions of dollars doing something that right now y'all can hear me say right now. Like I can't even wrap my mind around, it's honestly overwhelming, how much is already coming on the table. Um, it, and that's how I know I made the right decision. And that's something I want everyone to be able to say and why I keep going. That's what drives me. Those emails, when you get that, you, you look in your phone, whether you're sitting in bed, which you shouldn't be doing, but I do it all the time. And you get that email and it just gets you giddy. You're like, yeah. you send the submission, you yeah. get the response back. You made it into the pitch. You made the customer, like whatever it may be. Ask yourself, are you getting emails every day that get you giddy? Because I feel like if you're not getting giddy emails, then we got to change well, the giddiness. Well, I'm going to argue with you on that one because that's a question of who are you doing it for? Will you do it for the cause and not applause? Will you do it because it's what you want to do and you can't not do it because you hopefully it's something that you feel is the right thing to do? Um Those are decisions that I've had to make several times throughout my career um, that some worked out, some didn't. But the funny thing is with podcasts, like even your listeners right now, with podcasts, you don't necessarily have any clue who's listening. And so I listen to trillions of podcasts like constantly and I don't, maybe I should do this. Okay, there's my idea. I, I don't ever rarely actually tell the, you know, host Like, hey, this is amazing, by the way. I listen to this all the time. Thank you for your work. And 
at the same time, I know they don't need that. That's a really interesting point. It's kind of like an Amazon review. I buy so many things from Amazon and I don't review it. Exactly. And the thing is, <laughs> you know, with podcasts, you see the numbers just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can't, it's not apples to apples with how many messages did I get? Yes, the messages are so meaningful because you finally get to hear from someone who's out there in the world listening to what you've done, right? That is super awesome. And, you know, on a whole nother level because of the fact that it's not even on social, how you can see who's viewing it, right? Or who liked your post or there's no comments. So it is a very unique kind of platform that I, I don't know. I love it. I think it has its own purpose. And I do also think it gives so much more um, reach and options to people from across the world. However, it is unique in the fact that it's not necessarily always a two-way conversation. And that actually is one reason why with Career Fluencer, I wanted we, to we bring on a about, ton of people. We, we were talking yeah. about this before, like what makes a great podcast? Yes, yes. And to me, it's, you know, the people I have, at least you have like so many awesome, well-spoken, you know, polished, like this is something that's a normal thing for a lot of them, maybe not all of them, right? But for me, a lot of the guests, especially at the beginning who I'd bring on were not necessarily full-time speakers, right? Um, so it's a matter of, I just so believe that everybody has a story behind their resume. Everybody has a story um, with insights and things that they've learned on their own journey. And that belief, I think, is what helped me, at least. I'm, I don't know on your end, you know, I'm not going to speak for you because that's, it's totally different type of podcast. But yeah, it's just knowing that you might not even know the story that's hidden inside of you and all the moments that would be super valuable for someone to hear. Um, so it's kind of like doing a tango with somebody that's on your podcast because you have to have that right trust built in and... Um, the tango. <laughs> yeah, we're dancing right now. Don't we're you? dancing. Don't you see? <laughs> there, there it is. But you're yeah. right. It's true. It, the, the whole just back and forth. The best podcasts are the ones that you're just having a conversation with someone and you just happen to be recording. Right. Those are like right. the best. And it's just genuine. When you can get to that, you're truly an expert. If there's one thing that I decided from the very beginning, like back years ago when I first listened to a podcast, I was like, if I'm ever a guest on a podcast, <laughs> which I guess that's foreshadowing, but... I told myself, I do not ever want to be scripted ever. That's right. all. I, I don't know. Well, if, that's what makes podcasts so great. They are unscripted. Yeah. Yeah. But literally, I never want them to sound the same. <laughs> like, that's just what I told myself. I don't know. That's, that's just me. Yeah. And you're a very interesting human. And you're just getting started. Like, there's so many different paths you could go down We this. all are, though, right? And that's what's exciting is that when you focus on what's right, what's going right, what is showing you signs of the direction that you wanted to go in instead of what's going wrong and, oh, this I wanted this to happen and it didn't work out as planned. Rarely, I just expect things never to go as planned ever. And then I'm always surprised. Right, yeah. <laughs> I, live, I live constantly to be let down. So when I'm not, I'm so excited. That has definitely served me in many ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> life is a letdown. <laughs> What's your exactly. philosophy? Life is your li life Let's is a letdown. Let's talk about the good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a great philosophy. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So that's just kind of my whole mindset. I think in terms of career, in terms of life, in terms of how I stay motivated. Because I know when I'm not that way, <laughs> I see a difference. So it's one easy thing to do that you're again you're doing in your brain. You know. What are some of the things you do during the day that you find yourself saying to yourself like, "Oh my God." I'm so happy right now. I, one thing that is so true with the way I, I live, I guess, um, and it's always been that way is, um, number one is like treat every day like an interview. That is one thing that this is way before career influencer that I would tell other people too. Um, it's just how I look at it. What but do you mean by that? By treating every day like an interview, I guess part two is, you know, all we have is right now. Now is the only thing we know for sure. The future is unknown. It's always been unknown unless you're a fortune teller. The past is history. All we have is right now. And that's why the gift is, the present is called a gift. I love that. Right? Yeah. So I, I literally live that every single day. And it helps me stay super focused in the moment and appreciative of every single opportunity, every person. Think about it. The fact that there are, I don't even know, trillions of people on this planet. What are the odds that you're going to meet? I don't even know. All the people you'll ever meet. That blows my mind, even that. I agree with that because I think about it with college. 
College is a great experience because you meet a lot of really, really great friends, in my opinion. The education second, yes. uh, just my humble opinion, I think it's the community that's the college experience. And for me, I met a couple of really great people, Pat Murray, Justin Mark, shout out. You know, some people that became lifelong friends, but I know if I had gone to any other college, there was a group of people that would have ended up becoming my lifelong best friends. It All happens. because of the college I went to or the job you work for. So there's so many best friends actually, out there that you haven't met yet. I would argue it's because of you. You could be wherever you are. And if you believe in yourself and you are who you are, I do believe you'll figure it out. I think we limit ourselves based on our surroundings, on where we are in terms of even in our careers, right? You know, if somebody's working at Starbucks, but they have a master's degree, I can't even begin to tell you if I could speak to them, I would say, just because you've gotten rejections or whatever happened, like it is still so possible for you. Well, right? a lot of people just haven't found like their vehicle. Right. right. But there's also a lot of people who know they have the potential, but yet doubt and, you know, other opinions influence. It's right. Tough. It's tough. Right. They overbear your own influence and bringing that self influence. If there's anything I'd ever want to influence anybody, it's influence yourself first. Well, confidence and belief is sexy and people want to hire people that are confident and have belief in themselves. But a lot of people haven't had enough wins or even micro wins to give them that confidence. Well, do you know how you build confidence, right? It's by taking action. You do it before you're confident. Right. And you build the confidence in tiny little steps that you do. If you can just hold your breath for 10 seconds and send out an email and then they reply, whoa, that worked, you know, and you have that confidence. But we want the confidence of knowing it's going to happen before we do it. And that's what will tie you up. And also the understanding of life is a letdown going off of that theme. Exactly. Is Focus on what's right. Yeah. You, when I DM people, I don't expect to hear from 90% of the people I talk to. Like I just don't expect it. Right. right. I expect them to have a bunch of loopholes and systems that I'm going to have to go through with like talking to publicists and all this like annoying stuff. I'm like, hey, can we just hop on the phone? So many times in my life. I just want to be like, hey, can we hop on a phone? Do we need I love to be keeping emailing? things so, so simple. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. hey, uh, why well, overcomplicate anything ever? I don't know. Right. <laughs> right. It's like I a simple yeah. philosophy, but too many times we are our own destruction, right? We want to feel like we're living this like Gucci out lifestyle. And I'm not talking about like, and the things you wear, but just the things that you They're are. perfect. Yeah, everything's yeah, like, perfect. Oh, well, let me check like what time uh, I'm free. And meanwhile, you're like in your PJs in bed, you know. We're humans. Even the people that are like super successful, they they wake up and go to the bathroom just like everyone else. They mm -hmm. look like shit in the morning, right? Yeah. You know, they're people too, and they have emotions. And you don't know if your idea by you reaching out to them clicks with them. Right. And all it but takes is But you never a, know unless you try. Amen. That's why I, I teach this lesson called Throwing Hail Marys in our podcasting course. And the idea is very simple. I guess it's kind of like what happened with you and how mm -hmm. I reach out to you. You know, find somebody that would be great for your podcast or for your show or for your uh, career or for your life and just throw a Hail Mary. A Hail Mary is a DM. It could be in the form of Instagram. It could be in the form of an email. You can go online to like hunter.io, contact out, gets anybody's email in the world, send a normal email mm -hmm. complimenting them showing that you've done some sort of level of research into something they've done asking to chat you just, if everyone did that they could get connected with some of the most amazing people and a lot of the most successful people want to do that they want to connect with you they want people like you and i to reach out to them and say hey i'm i love your work i love that book you wrote i love the part where you talked about how the law of attraction changed your life or gummy bears are the world's greatest, whatever. <laughs> and next thing you know, they're like, wow, I love gummy bears too. And now you're talking to a multi-mega millionaire or just some crazy scientist about gummy bears and you guys connected on a different level and now you become friends. And then that leads towards another adventure. I see it with like my buddy, Peter Taunton. I ended up by doing this podcast, I got connected with a bunch of podcast publicists and they actually refer their clients to me saying, hey, like, would you want this person to be on the show type of thing? One of those people was Peter Taunton, shout out. Uh, Peter's the CEO and founder of Snap Fitness. They have like 3,300 plus locations worldwide. 
And he became a good friend of mine. Over the next six months, we just kind of stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. When I moved to Miami, we ended up hanging out. And now, you know, he comes over regularly for dinner parties. And then that's led to great experiences in life. That all started because of a DM. Ask yourself, how many people here have just thrown out a DM and it changes everything in life, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would say that, you know, when it comes to, when I think about my career and the opportunities that I've had, there's zero way I would have been able to know or plan or I would have thought you were lying if you told me, hey, this is going to happen, this, this, and this, and this. And the only way that that happens is if you are open to it, period. It's so true. And if you are willing to just do things just to try it, to say yes to more things than you say no to, and not feel that pressure of having to have it all figured out, because if there's one thing that I don't think anyone has, let alone me, it's figuring it out. We live in a changing environment. We grow and we have different needs and wants. And it's okay to say that, well, at the beginning of my career, I wanted this and um, I want to change, right? And I think that's the problem is we feel like we have to have it so perfect, but there are so many opportunities out there that how could anybody have it perfectly down? They don't. Nobody does. And so it's only a matter of believing in yourself and testing the water, seeing what's possible instead of staying where you are, you know, stuck when there's literally a age of Google where we have more information than ever at our fingertips right now in our pockets. Why are there so many talented, smart people who are unhappy where they are and wishing they were somewhere else, no matter where you are right now in your journey? Think of that as the starting point. This is where I'm starting. This is the perfect starting spot. Think of how that story is going to sound later on. And when you're saying that story, how many people it could inspire. Think of those sort of things instead of what's going wrong. And a lot of times we don't realize some of these mic things that don't seem too inspiring to us are actually very inspiring to others. I can't even. Yes. So much. Yes. Like I went you to, have no idea who you are influencing when they're, you have no idea who you're influencing. That's one thing. I just got goosebumps because the people who have contacted me, who have told me even anonymously, I can't even emphasize that enough yeah. that you are influencing people. You are influential already. Even if you have zero followers or no online presence, right? In your every single day life. Right. And the question is, who are you influencing and what influence do you want to have? Yeah. And what is that vibe? What is your vibe? What do you do? What do you give to people? I want to give light, if anything. I love it. That's all I want to say. That's, yeah. That's why I'm so such a fan of the day. You know, people yeah. love night. And I guess Miami's all about nightlife, but I haven't experienced any of that because it's been COVID <laughs> I and I moved either. here. And- because I'm a hermit. Because <laughs> yeah, I, live in a show. I like to read uh, <laughs> and listen to podcasts, obviously. <laughs> but like getting the light and just like being around, it's, it's, it's energy. It's, I'm not too much into like the whole crystal deal, right? I respect everyone that's into it. And I'm so fascinated by people who are into it because I'm always like, what are they seeing in it that I'm not Whatever seeing? Whatever floats your boat. That's all I'll say. Right. Amen. But the energy thing is that's for real. Like, When I mentioned that you have great energy, that's a no brainer. Everyone knows that when they listen to you and talk to you because you're really, you listen. You're probably one of the best listeners I've had on the podcast in terms of who you you. are. And I think that's a, (laughs) that's a huge compliment. Yeah. No, really. Because you need to listen a lot in your, in your world. You want people to talk, but you want to get them to come out. You're kind of like a therapist when it comes down to getting (laughs) it to understand Really? <laughs> if you ever wanted to divert, you would trust. See, it. this is all new information, right? You don't know. See, again, you have no idea what your influence is, what other people are seeing, what potential things are right in front of you, right? If you were to just believe in yourself first. But you have to have a certain level of belief in yourself. Just, just a tiny bit. You need of, to get there, and then like the I'm willing more, to try. The more and more you go up, you need to just keep having more and more belief. Like you just, there's levels. To this no, belief. I don't think so. Actually, I think, I think so. you can just tippy toe your way forward. That's how I feel. Like I've done everything. Yeah, but you tippy toe, but now all of a sudden you on the sixth stair, girl. 
Yeah. You and so I'm, I'm, I can either go backwards or I can tippy toe forward. Well, I, and the thing is, you don't have to have a hundred percent belief before you do anything. Well, that's like the, if I get 1% better every day then, or every year, right. I'm getting better. You're always growing, whether you realize it or not. Are you growing in a direction that you like? Are you growing towards and becoming already becoming someone who you want to be and it's there's nothing wrong if that's not a complete yes but just know everything every experience that you've had throughout your life throughout your career is constantly adding up and creating who you are and it's a question of are you going to use that potential or are you going to keep waiting on the world to change, literally. Because right now is a time for people who have that potential and you're at home, right? Why not see what's possible for you? Whatever it is, you know, whatever project, whatever initiative, are you willing to at least try it? And you can tell zero people if it's a total flaw. you can take a course too. Just go online, find a course for 20 bucks and just follow the course. All you need is one step closer. And that is so possible. If you think of that, instead of, you know, the huge picture that makes you feel overwhelmed, just look at right in front of you, right ahead. And that will always keep you moving forward. I like the line and we mentioned it earlier, but it was like, what are you looking for? I like the line. It's like, what am I looking for? Nothing, but I'm open to anything. Right. Right. And that is a great place to be. Like you know. for sure, because when you are open to anything falling on the table and you are also open to saying yes to anything that's not a total no, then that philosophy right there will take your career so far, period. I said yes to opportunities on the table that I would have never planned, quote, planned, right? And that is how I got to where I am today. And where you are is changing people's <laughs> lives and helping people yeah. grow and being that pathfinder for people and giving them belief in themselves. You believe in people, you know, and, and sometimes that's the first time some of these people have ever even been believed in and you got a lot of belief to give. And that's why you get such these coming out of my ears. I mean, (laughs) you got these, these, so many people are constantly reaching out and, and I'm just really fascinated by what you're doing and how you're growing. And I'm so grateful you came on the podcast. Hopefully this becomes not the first time it becomes a multiple thing down the year. What do you mean? Hopefully there is no, hopefully it is, or it isn't. So it is. <laughs> well, I know I'm going to be sending, I'm going to be making sure it tries to happen, you know? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, really. I appreciate you. And then how can people follow the journey of Cynthia and everything you're doing with CareerFluence? CareerFluencer.com. C-A-R-E-E-R-F-L-U-E-N-C-E-R.com. Yeah. And you, you'll find the podcast on there as well as all the major podcast And your platforms. podcast is awesome. You do it very different. You, you have a system down and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a system for sure. I like it. I, I think I like to think that our listeners definitely like it. Again, like I said, you barely hear from a tiny percentage of really, really engaged ones. But yeah, I mean, so far it's been amazing. And that's what I want to say is that you couldn't possibly plan or know what your journey will ever have in front of you. So just see where life takes you and take it by the horns. And if we had to bring it back to the time where if you could have went back in time, right? Mm -hmm. Before you became the, before you got into that PR firm, I think that's a great time to ask this question. Mm -hmm. And you now could have traveled back in time and said to that girl who you were, what are one, two or three things you would have told that person that could have saved you a ton of time, money, heartache, headache, and it can't be, I wouldn't have said anything because it made me who I am today, which is a great answer. (laughs) What were some of those things that you would say to yourself? You are on the right path. That's what I would have said. Because at that time back then, when my career was like throbbing in my brain, right? Trying to, all these question marks, trying to figure it out. um, My whole question was, what is my path? Where am I? How did we pick this? Right. And I would just say you are on the path. The path is what you are on right now. Boom. So enjoy the journey. There she is. I yeah. appreciate you being on the show. Till Thank next you time. so much. Thank you for listening to another episode of Len Jones party of two. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review and subscribe to stay up to date on our new episodes. And remember, hope is not a strategy. Keep making moves. Till next time, peace.